I'm telling you, folks, if you see when Bobby Roth comes to your town for the master class, you're a filmmaker or anything of that nature, you have to attend. I mean, it, and the shows that he's directed, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Grey's Anatomy, Flash, was it Flash Forward? Flash Forward. I love that show. I'm like, I'm just, Don't forget Lost. Don't forget Prison Break. Those are favorites. <laughs> That's right. I'm sitting in the audience, mouth agape, to see, I know this guy's work. So tell us more. We'll continue our conversation, because as I said, I was just aghast at the content you have here. So how long did it take you to put all that content together? We've been working on this about a year and a half, and but a lot of the content was stuff that I've been developing over the last 10 or 15 years in terms of the class. What we never thought we would do, and it just kind of expanded, is we once we started searching, for instance, like there's a lot of footage of me directing. I didn't even know it existed. We found it on the internet. There were like Fox did, you know, um, what they call B-roll, yes. you know. And we hunted that down, and, and some of it's very good, because I, I think it's fun to see the director actually working and how you relate to people. And for me, uh, I'm Jewish, so I talk with my hands a lot, which is kind of, you know. Related, I talk about <laughs> and so I got to watch my, my body language and stuff in a way I never was conscious of, and it was kind of funny. But I think that, that it try, the four elements of the project were my class, the interviews, we have 57 interviews with people I've worked with, 27 kind of major actors. Um, the clips from the shows themselves, just little pieces of the scenes. And like I said, the B-roll, which is footage of me actually directing, which I think is good because you get to see how I'm kind of relating to the actors. So there was a particularly good one with Chandra Wilson, which I was happy to see. Because I mean, I'm, I'm watching it for the first time because you never see a movie until you see it with an audience. I tell you, um, my mom would be lucky I'm sitting here talking with you because she loves Grace. She loves that whole slate of programs. Now, you also discussed about how to, quote, take care of your team, especially the editors. Can you just elaborate to the people out there? Yeah, I think sometimes because the job is a hard job and you have to work hard, you sometimes forget that there's other people working as hard or harder than you. And I think you do the show a disservice by not acknowledging how many people support you and how many hours they work and what skill sets they bring. And in the editing episode, I, I think it's, it's particularly germane because the editor is there in television after you're gone. And so for me, the bond that I make with that person isn't just personal, they're selling my ideas to the studio, to the network, to the showrunner after I'm gone. So they're more than just a, a pair of hands or even a creative mindset. They're a liaison to the final cut. There are two definitely poignant stories that struck me. One was the Paramount exec. Can you just reiterate that story? Sure, because um, when I was very young and brash, I didn't have any ins to the film business except that my dad knew a guy who happened to be head of Paramount Pictures at the time, Howard Koch. And he graciously offered to screen my picture with me and give me a review. And when he was done watching my movie, he told me that it, it was terrible, that I had no talent, and that I should get into the carpet business. And only years later did I realize that my response, which was to think, well, he doesn't know anything, that he was too old or too conservative to get me, was really the impetus that one needs to go forward in the business. I simply would not let him judge me. I probably should have let him judge me. He was a very bright guy. But in this case, I believed in myself enough, and that's what I really wanted to share with my students, is that don't let anybody tell you you can't do this. You can get better at it, but you, you have something to say. We all do, you know? And so there's a lot of tools that hopefully this show this movie will help you be better at telling your story, but we all have stories. And the Cannes Film Festival, because like I said, that was, um, we're like, what? Well, it's funny that both those stories happened when I was very young, probably the same year, if, because they, they're around the same film. I made a little picture as my master thesis. It was very ambitious, and it was about African-American workers uh, in a 
strike situation in Los Angeles, and it was based on a real guy that I'd driven truck with, and I, I just thought it was a terrific movie, and I would go to the Cannes Film Festival with it. Only what I didn't realize is you have to be invited to go to the Cannes Film Festival. I went anyway. I found there was a sidebar event. I entered the film in it. I th handed out little flyers on the street. I was very disappointed. I was staying, I didn't have any money, I was staying in a $14 a night room that turned out to be a brothel. And Wait, hold on, slow down. Say that again, where did you stay again? I stayed in a whorehouse. I didn't know it, it was just the cheapest hotel I could find because I didn't know you gotta have a hotel room before you go to Cannes. And I was, one night I was in the brothel and uh, the guy knocked on my door and said, you have a phone call. And I didn't have a phone in my room, I had to go down to the office. and the head of the jury was on the phone. And I didn't even believe he was really the head of the jury because I thought it was a friend playing a trick on me. But it was really the head of the jury. And he said, I heard your film's very interesting. I'd like to see it. And the, this guy happened to be a guy named Constantin Costa-Gavras who won an Academy Award for the film Z in 1969 and was my hero. And this started a whole relationship that I've had till this day. Costa's now in his 80s and I still see him when I go to France. And it wasn't that I got anything out of that screening with Costa in terms of I didn't get a job or I didn't, you know, make contacts, but I was so inspired by having somebody who was really a wonderful filmmaker who I admired take an interest in me. And I think that's very important. So, I mean, as I think we all need mentors, and I think when we get further along in our careers, we should be mentors. That's why I like teaching, and that's, that was the impetus for this project, is that I learned a lot in 40 years. I managed to get it down to three and a half hours, and now I'm sharing it with people if they're interested. Excellent, excellent. Ex and besides, you don't look like you've been in the film business 40 years. <laughs> Not at all. Thank you so much. Now, the f yeah, one last question before I know you have to run, but the film industry is changing the landscape as far as how films are delivered because you have Netflix and all those other platforms. So is it the filmmaking changing or it's just the delivery of them? Well, I always think it's a reciprocal thing that technology affects the creative and the creative affects technology. I mean, there was a time in the 70s where film got very interesting because the lighter, smaller Aeroflex camera came out and people could make movies like Midnight Cowboy or Five Easy Pieces or Easy Rider, I guess, was the most famous of the new cinema. And so I imagine that the technology of these delivery systems, which allows you to watch a great piece of art on your phone or on your computer, and hopefully eventually people will get projectors and look at them on big screens in their homes, I think that the that makes it more accessible. And so you see this new kind of hybrid television, which is kind of, they're really like movies, but they're they're also they're the quality of movies with the consistency of television. So True Detective or House of Cards or Game of Thrones where, you know, you could get 10 hours in a season, Masters of Sex, Ray Donovan, there's so many good shows from all over the place. And I think the fact that people, they're not watching less, they're watching it differently. And I think that um, hopefully, it's kind of going to have a golden age, and there's going to be more and more good stuff produced, which will be more jobs for directors and writers and actors. Uh, it doesn't seem to be waning. It's just you have to be adaptable. And, you know, I thought I only wanted to make movies, and then I got into TV movies, and then they went away, and so I got into episodic. And then, I mean, you just have to realize that if you live long enough and work long enough, everything's going to change. And how you adapt to that change is going to determine your happiness. A true renaissance man, everyone. <laughs> Bobby Roth, thank you for the time. Thank you. This was great. really thick.